Welcome to Mastering Solutions. For this general problem, they tell us that the minimum stopping distance for a car traveling at a speed of 30 meters per second is 60 meters, and that's including the distance that's traveled during the driver's reaction time of half of a second. For part A, we need to draw a position versus time graph for the motion of the car, and we'll assume that the car is at x equals 0 meters right when the driver first sees the emergency situation. So basically, they're just saying, don't worry about anything before. Right when they see it, we'll call that x is 0. So before we can get to graphing it, obviously we have to figure out some numbers. In the problem, they tell us that the stopping distance, the minimum stopping distance, is 60 meters. So we know that at the end of however long this is, the car is going to end up at 60 meters. So we know that the car will be up here somewhere at 60 meters because that's how far the minimum stopping distance is. First though, we need to figure out how far the car went during that reaction time of half of a second. So we'll use the kinematic equation of x final is equal to x initial plus v initial times time plus one half times the acceleration times the time squared. Some of these things can be simplified out though because the acceleration is zero for the reaction time because this is before the driver has realized that they need to stop. So this all will go away. The x initial we said is zero so that can also go away. So it's really just the velocity equation where we have the velocity times the time. They say that the initial velocity is 30 meters per second, and the time is half of a second for the reaction time. So 1 half times 30 is going to be 15. So the car has traveled 15 meters during the half of a second reaction time. So here at half of a second, the driver went up 15 meters, and the acceleration because this is a position versus a time graph, the slope of this will give us velocity. So since they're going at a constant velocity from zero up to 15 is a straight line. And so now we need to figure out how long it took the driver to stop this in. To do that, we have to figure out the deceleration first though. So let's figure that out by using V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2a times delta x. We want to isolate acceleration, but the final velocity though is going to be zero because we're stopping, so that can go to zero. And so if we subtract both sides of the equation by initial velocity, we have negative vi squared is equal to 2a delta x, and then we'll divide both sides of the equation by 2 delta x, So we have acceleration is equal to negative vi squared over 2 delta x. So now we can plug our numbers in here to find the acceleration. So negative, and we have 30 meters per second squared. And that's divided by 2. And what is the delta x in this case? You might be tempted to put in 60 meters here because that's the total stopping distance, but we have to account for the x initial because the x final is 60 meters, but we're minusing because of a delta x final minus initial. We're subtracting now the initial delta x position of 15 meters. So we have negative 30 squared, and then we'll divide all of that by 2 times 45 or 60 minus 15. So we have a deceleration of negative 10 meters per second squared. And now that we have the acceleration, we can use that in one of the other kinematic equations to find out what the total time was for the stopping distance. The one that we'll be using is V final is equal to V initial plus acceleration times t final minus t initial. We want to set the final velocity as zero because if the final velocity is set to zero, that will give us the t final as the total time for the distance. Let's subtract again the initial velocity over. So we have negative v initial is equal to acceleration times t final minus t initial. And then we'll divide both sides of the equation by acceleration. So t final minus t initial is equal to negative velocity initial over acceleration. And then we'll add both sides of the equation with t initial plus t initial. So finally, our equation will be t final is equal to negative velocity initial divided by acceleration plus 
the initial time. Let's rewrite the equation over here just so we have a little bit more space. So t final is equal to negative the initial over a plus the initial time. And so t final will be equal to negative 30 meters per second divided by the acceleration of 10 meters per second squared, negative 10 meters per second squared, plus the initial time of half of a second to account for the reaction time. So negative 30 divided by negative 10, and then we'll add, we'll have negative 30 divided by negative 10, which will give us 3 plus half of a second gives us 3.5 seconds. So the final time for the total stopping distance for the car is 3.5 seconds. So now we can go back up to the top to our graph here, and we can use that new information of the total time to figure out where the car stops. So three and a half right here is going to be at 60. So really this is all the information that you need to draw the graph. We know that the car is gradually slowing as we've been talking about, so it will have kind of a parabola shape as it's slowing down. If you wanted to get some more information to be really precise with your graph, what you could do if you wanted is use this equation here, x final is equal to x initial plus vi times time plus one half the acceleration times the time squared, and plug in all the information that we have now, including the different times where you want to figure out what the position is at that spot. So for instance, we would have, if we, I'll just leave t alone, so we would have the x initial, we'll say that is zero meters, because when we do this, we're starting at the very beginning of the situation. So it's the very, very initial position, which is going to be x is equal to zero plus the initial velocity is 30 meters per second times whatever the time we want to plug in, plus one half the acceleration we said is negative 10 meters per second squared times whatever time again, the same value we'll plug in there, squared. So when we go to the calculator, we'll have zero plus 30 times the time, and we'll say one second for an example, plus 0.5, times the acceleration of negative 10 meters per second squared times the time squared. So that will give us a position at one second of 25 meters. So one will be up here about right there-ish. We can do the same thing for all the other seconds if you would like. So again, as an example, we'll just change the, every one second to two, two. So at two seconds, we would have 40 meters. So two seconds will be up here about like that. And so you can see we're following, just like we talked about, this kind of parabola shape as it's slowing down to a stop at the 60 meters. You don't have to do those extra points if you don't want. It's just to illustrate that the math is there if you wanted to be more precise and to plot points along your path. Let's move on to part B where they ask what is the minimum stopping distance for the same car if it was traveling at an initial velocity of 40 meters per second. So since it's the same car, we know that it'll have the exact same acceleration, so we don't need to go through all of that again. So we know that the acceleration will be negative 10 meters per second squared. They give us the initial velocity, of course, of 40 meters per second now. And so we'll do a similar process where we need to figure out initially how far did it go in the reaction time. So x final is equal to the initial velocity times the time. The initial velocity now is 40 meters per second. And then the time for the reaction time is again a half of a second. So 40 times half of a second is going to be 20 meters. The initial distance that it went for the reaction time is 20 meters. So let's write down the equation that we figured out above. We have x final is equal to the negative initial velocity squared, and then that will be divided by 2 times the acceleration plus the initial x position of the reaction time. So we have negative, and the initial velocity now is 40 meters per second. We'll square that, and then we'll divide all of that by 2 times the acceleration, which we said, of course, is negative 10. And then we'll add to all of that the initial position, which is 20, of course. So we have 100 meters is the final distance or the total stopping distance if we start with initial 
velocity of 40 meters per second instead of 30.